continuing with the series on books on um, knife training, we come to a book that isn't actually about knife training. And it's this book, Filipino Martial Arts by Dan Inosanto. And the reason that it doesn't include the knife work is that when it was published in 1977, um, the publishers thought that it was um, too sensitive a subject to put um, the edge weapon, particularly the knife, the dagger material in the book at that time. Obviously, later on, um, that kind of thing changed. However, uh, despite the fact that it doesn't really cover edge weapons, although the, the front cover, as you see, it is um, swords, um, it's still very, very relevant, uh, both to um, people interested in training with the edge weapon, but also in its um, historical context, which, which I will I'll discuss. Uh, this book uh, was discussed on a forum about 10 years ago about knives, it mentioned it, and it was fetching up to $200 uh, at the time, um, which uh, I was amazed at. So I, I immediately went and got my copy, um, which, which is also autographed, so it makes it even more uh, rare, uh, and put it in the safe. So... Um, in preparing for this a couple of days ago, I went and dug it out the safe. And um, one of the things in the book is a, a quite a detailed bio of Dan Inosanto. And I'd forgotten just what a varied um, and, and um, rich and experienced life he'd had, including service in the American Airborne and um, training in numerous martial arts, too many to mention. Um, of course, he, he was... Um, known for uh, being a student of Bruce Lee and being Bruce Lee's demonstration partner um, many times. And he was engaged in um, teaching uh, Bruce Lee's martial arts, JKD, uh, for quite a while, um, but then realised that um, the Filipino martial arts uh, deserved wider recognition. And um, because of his... Um, his own background, he is Filipino, he was able to go to the masters, of which there are many in California. That was a center of um, Filipino uh, immigration into the United States. And uh, they're in the book. He does um, pen portraits of many of these masters, some of them fairly old guys, and um, the key points of their systems. It's, it's all analyzed very, very well. Also goes into the history of the Filipino martial arts. Um, for example, um, during World War II, um, they, there was a, a battalion of Filipino soldiers and uh, they trained with the bolo knives, the large knives. They also, as far as I, I, I remember, there was some training of the US Marines in that as well by Filipino instructors. Um, but but after the war, it, it became secret again um, because the Filipino community wanted to keep it as their own martial art uh, in a similar way to what happened with a lot of the Chinese martial arts over in the UK. Uh, but um, Danny was able to gather a lot of the information um, from, from these uh, masters and it's in this book. And the book was groundbreaking um, because it did put the Filipino martial arts on the map. And of course now it's, it's a worldwide major um, martial art. Um, really, Filipino martial arts is an umbrella title because there's as many and as varied as, say, Japanese martial arts. Japanese martial arts could go from using um, a naginata to uh, jiu-jitsu, for example. And the Filipino martial arts have the same breadth of, um, of diverse schools, styles, different weapons, uh, and so on. And some instructors go towards completely an art. Uh, some have 
gone into making it a sport. They have competitions with the stick and so on. Some train law enforcement and the military and have made it more hardcore and so on. So it, it's such a big uh, title that the end user can take from it what, it, what he uh, wishes. Okay, so from the book, uh, why I, I think it, it's relevant. Some of the main takeaways from the system and, and how it relates to knife training. The first one is the basic striking angles. Now this, until I was introduced to it in, in the Filipino martial arts, um, it, when I was introduced, it was a revelation because it simplifies the whole language of um, doing techniques. So instead of saying to somebody, come in with a diagonal right-hand attack uh, to my left side or whatever, you just say, give me a number one angle, number two angle, and so on, all the angles. Each system has uh, their own numbering systems and their own angles. Um, the only thing that matters is everyone's on the same page. Some have um, 12 angles, some have fewer than that, and some have more. But um, uh, if you take the sort of five basic angles, well, add two more, say, seven angles, you've got most of the things you, you'd need. So that's the first one. Um Uh, apologies uh, for the pause. I was just uh, interrupted by the postman. Anyway, uh, the second point I was making about the relevance of this book is um, the history of, of the Philippine, uh, Filipino martial arts is um, the Philippines was invaded by uh, Spain. And uh, at the time, the weapons were the Renaissance sword and, and dagger and things like that. And those, we those weapons training systems were preserved in the Philippines, where back in Europe, they'd moved on to firearms and so on. So you had um, not the sports of fencing, but the actual martial arts of the use of um, various types of um, either edged or impact weapons. And this is reflected in another part of the book, which is environmental training. And it's things like uh, training at different levels on a staircase. So your assailant is above you or your assailant is below you. And they, they're doing drills like that in a doorway. So your techniques, the sticks or the weapon on bouncing off the door jam, you're able to, to fit it in. This actually comes into something that um, uh, when we um, were discussing this with Don Drager in Japan, he, he'd arranged for us a demonstration of uh, EI sword by one of his um, instructors. And he pointed out, Don pointed out, he said, look, this is all done in a small Japanese room. He said a lot of the more elaborate flowing techniques that you see in, in the more kind of uh, modern versions uh, don't work in a normal room. So that's an important point. Uh, another takeaway is um, the flow. Um, the Filipino um, systems are recursive. There's always a uh, next move. So from one strike flows into the next and so on. One of my um, objections to some of the material we've already reviewed, the fencing based stuff, is it's kind of isolated. You, you throw um, an inquitata attack and there's no follow up. It, the, the syst there's no system to it. it. It's just a picture of a guy doing an inquitata. What would you do next? Whereas the Filipino systems, uh, there's always another move. And what I always explain is that is the knife seems to know where to go next once you've learned the systems. When I first, well, I've only trained with Danny once, but when I first met him, 
in 77, I think it was in Manchester, flow was the first thing I noticed about the system. I had um, seen pictures in magazines um, of the um, of the, the drills. And I actually had this book. And um, coming from a Goju background, I thought it was all rather staccato. Strike, pause, strike, pause, strike. And um, when Danny dem demonstrated the, the various uh, stick drills, it was the, the flowing speed uh, and the flexibility that was very, very impressive. The other thing is the footwork, the angulation, the movement uh, is, is allied to, to the knife. Speed training, it gives you, um, makes your mind work faster because the tip of the stick uh, is moving much faster than your hand just, just through physics. So you've got to be able to intercept that and it wakes your brain up. Um, the alive hand, if you're doing, um, if you're doing a, a drill with a, a single weapon, then the other hand's being used. It's there, it's, it's doing something, it's contributing to the attack. There's an aliveness, the alive hand, they call it. Uh, and <clears throat> the uh, it's very, very good good for it's contralateral training for the brain because your, your hands are doing two different things at the same time it's probably one of the most um the, the most um beneficial contralateral exercises there is or the most complicated um the book was highly influential it kicked off the worldwide interest in the filipino martial arts i i know of of people who's interested in this started from reading this book and they ended up going to the philippines and training at a high level so it was a tremendously influential book obviously now there's much more material on the filipino martial arts out there including stuff by danny he's done numerous uh, dvds and so on and i would urge you to get hold of him because he he, he was the he's the fountain of where it all came from um we were talking about stick recently in the gutter fights and someone asked me, I uh, mentioned, you know, training with Danny and asked me what he was like. And um, he, he really is, uh, uh, apart from being um, a highly um, um, proficient instructor, which he is, you know, well level, he is one of the nicest guys in the martial arts. He is the epitome of what you're supposed to be as a martial arts instructor. And uh, he, he really is a living uh, treasure as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and this book, um, even though it's rather, well, it's very expensive now, um, but uh, it was the one that started the, the whole ball rolling. And I hope I've made its connection to the importance of the knife training uh, somewhat clear.